Before there was NXT, there was Florida Championship Wrestling. For five years between 2007 and 2012, WWE's primary feeder system was the Tampa-based FCW, run by the retired wrestler turned trainer Steve Kern, who we'd like to think sold his land in the Everglades in order to finance the training center. There were no takeovers, no spin-offs across the Atlantic, and no Mauro spontaneously combusting after witnessing this month's wacky high spots, but some elements of the NXT flavor were still evident. In the five plus years of FCW's existence, 17 different men would hold the group's top title, the Florida Heavyweight Championship. Given the relatively recent existence of FCW, it stands to reason that of those 17 men, quite a few of them would have a presence on WWE programming today, and it's true, 9 out of those 17 are still with the WWE. The other 8 have all since moved on one way or another. Let's see who hit and who missed as we look back into the not too distant past at a slice of developmental lore. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow. Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Homes. Dwayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor Von, S.A. Rios, Jim and I, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Jake Hager. After FCW's Florida heavyweight title was established in February 2008, the lanky but powerful Hager would be its first claimant, winning a 23-man battle royal boasting a rather eclectic field, including Dolph Ziggler, Byron Saxton, and Fandango, all under different names, as well as cruiserweight Marvel turned FCW trainer Billy Kidman. Hager eliminated Ted DiBiase to win the belt and would proceed to hold it for seven months after. By that time, the since-renamed Jack Swagger had showed up on the ECW brand and would win the ECW Championship from Matt Hardy the following January. Swagger left WWE in March 2017 and has kept busy, reigning as the current Lucha Underground Champion under the name Jake Strong, and recently made his Bellator MMA debut, choking out JW Kaiser in his first fight. Seamus O'Shaughnessy The big man initialed SOS was not a walking tribute to his favorite Rihanna song, but rather a man we all came to recognize on the WWE roster. A pale skinned brute with fiery red hair and the remorseless spirit of a bloodthirsty warrior. O'Shaughnessy he captured the belt from Hager in September 2008 after coming up short in previous challenges to the belt and would go on to hold the gold for close to three months. Naturally, he wouldn't be long for developmental based on his look and skill level and would soon migrate to the WWE after having his O'Shaughnessy locked off where four world title reigns awaited. Today, the 41-year-old powerhouse still chugs along on the SmackDown brand, teaming with Cesaro as the bar. Eric Escobar Veteran IWA and WWC talent Eric Perez had toiled in the general WWE developmental system since the fall of 2005, and upon joining the FCW roster, the man known as the Puerto Rican Nightmare seemed poised for brighter days. As Escobar, he won the FCW Championship from Sheamus in a fatal four-way that also included Joe Hennig and Drew McIntyre, but would lose it to Hennig inside of three months. Escobar's time on the main roster was short-lived, as he debuted alongside Vicky Guerrero, but would be released three months later. Since then, Escobar wrestled sporadically up until working his last match of note in August 2016, for Puerto Rico's World Wrestling League. Joe Hennig The son of Mr. Perfect and grandson of Larry the Axe, Joe Hennig toppled Escobar to capture the belt in February 2009, but was forced to vacate it the following month due to injury. After returning from the shelf that June, Hennig remained an FCW fixture before debuting on the second season of NXT under the curious name of Michael McGillicutty. Since then, Hennig has remained at least a peripheral part of the main roster fair, changing his name to Curtis Axel in the spring of 2013, under which he would reign as Intercontinental and tag team champion. Today, Axel works on the Raw brand as one half of the cheerfully oblivious B team. Drew McIntyre. At the age of 23, McIntyre seemingly had all the necessary tools. The look, the height, the frame, the technique, and the silent charisma. He would win the vacant FCW title in March 2009, but lost it less than three months later as a shot on the main roster was coming into view. Whether he's the smarmy chosen one or the unremitting Scottish psychopath, McIntyre has demonstrated much value, though his latter incarnation 
Star Nation is one with definite world title ambitions. His best days may still be to come. McIntyre currently anchors on the heel side of the Monday Night Raw roster, headbutting his way through the cadre of babyfaces put before him. Tyler Rex Rex's title victory over McIntyre came a mere three weeks before debuting on the ECW brand, so his reign wasn't going to be lasting any substantial amount of time. The dreadlocked muscle man would find a little more regular use on SmackDown the following year, ditching some of the laid-back surfer quirks in favour of playing an icier badass. Rex never rose past the lower midcard for any length of time, and after a period spent with Kurt Hawkins, Rex asked for his release in August 2012. After one final match in 2014 for Pro Wrestling Syndicate, Rex retired from the business. Rex has since founded Body Spartan, a fitness website that offers articles on workouts, nutrition, and the like, while also selling customized nutrition plans. Heath Slater He may not have had kids yet, but he had plenty of upside. The long-haired Slater upended Rex in August 2009 to capture the title and would hold on to the belt for a mere six weeks. Five months after dropping the belt, Slater would join seven other wrestlers as part of the maiden cast of the NXT reality show. Though several more years would pass before we began to appreciate the one-man band for being one of the best good sports in WWE history. Slater remains with the WWE, though mostly relegated to the house show circuit as he continues to team with Rhino. Justin Angel Not quite Gabriel yet, Justin Angel would win the FCW crown from Slater, his eventual nexus and core ally in a two out of three falls match in September 2009. Angel would go on to have the third longest FCW title reign in the belt's four and a half year history, extending to nearly six months, debuting on the NXT reality show before the run ended. After changing his name to Gabriel to coincide with the NXT debut, the High Flyer lasted five years on the main roster before asking for his release in January 2015. In February 2019, Gabriel, as PJ Black, signed an exclusive deal with Ring of Honor, whom he had made appearances for in the months prior. Alex Riley The varsity villain ended Justin Angel's reign in March of 2010, capturing the gold in a three-way match that also included Wade Barrett. Riley managed to hold onto the championship belt for four months, during which time he would enter into NXT's second season, coming under the tutelage of The Miz. That partnership would extend into Miz's WWE title reign before falling out in the spring of 2011. Riley looked poised to benefit greatly from their split, but the big push simply never materialized, with backstage stories implicating a certain driving force that cannot be seen. After leaving WWE in 2016, Riley's gotten into acting, appearing in an episode of Glow, as well as the 2018 limited release boxing film Glass Jaw. Mason Ryan The massively chiseled Ryan ended Riley's reign in July 2010, winning a triple threat match that included Johnny Curtis, the future Fandango. He would go on to reign for over six and a half months with the belt, the second longest in the championship's history. As his reign began to wind down, the brawny Welshman was recruited into CM Punk's version of The Nexus, where he essentially played Batista with a different accent. Ryan received his WWE release in April 2014 and continued to wrestle until late the following year. Ryan is now part of Cirque du Soleil, playing the chief archer in the Las Vegas MGM Grand Show car. Bo Rotundo Somewhere along the way, the youngest son of Erwin R. Scheister dropped the last name that made his father famous, but before that day came, he was proud to be a Rotundo. And with the Rotundo name, Bo rode his way to three Florida heavyweight titles, the most of any wrestler, not to mention he became the first man to win the belt more than once. In the big time, however, winning would prove difficult for Dallas, and aside from a gag reign with Curtis Axel as the B-team, he's largely been used as little more than comic relief. Dallas still piles his trade on the Raw roster, though the B-team's specialness has long worn worn off. Lucky Cannon Dare we ask what was wrong with Cannon's previous ring name, Johnny Prime? It has considerably more oomph and pizzazz than Lucky Cannon, which sounds like the name of a comedic patsy out of an old vaudeville skit. Cannon had the honor of winning the belt from the future Bo Dallas before dropping it back to him in May 2011. Five months after dropping the title, Cannon wrestled what is, to date, his final match at the age of 24 for Florida Underground Wrestling. Since then, information about Cannon has been extremely scarce, as he's not been active on social media since apparently 2014. His present whereabouts seem to be a great mystery. Leo Kruger After Bo Rotundo vacated the title due to an injury, Kruger stepped in to snare the gold, winning a fatal four-way over future WWE stars Damian Sandow, Husky Harris, and Dean Ambrose. Kruger's gimmick was that of a maniacal South African bounty hunter, which was certainly a far cry from what he would morph into. Adam Rose, the lollipop-loving, bunny-befriended party boy. 
basically the real life Raymond Leppin went from Craven from Spider-Man to Russell Brand in Get Him to the Greek. Kruger held the FCW belt twice, but Rose sadly didn't live up to his potential. Rose has remained active on the indie scene since his 2016 WWE release, working with the likes of Madman Pondo, Rory McAllister, and Brian Pillman Jr. over the past year. Mike Dalton Dalton defeated Kruger for the belt in February 2012, but would only hold the title for three weeks, losing it back to Kruger. Over the next year and a half, the Lance Storm trainee failed to really stand out, and so a gimmick change was in order. Enter Tyler Breeze, the selfie-taking narcissist that dazzled fans with his awing athletics. Breeze would gain a bit of traction alongside Fandango as a pair of wise-cracking detectives in clever comedy skits, though that fizzled out after Fandango was sidelined with injury. Today, Breeze remains a part of the Raw brand, where he's hardly seen outside of live events and secondary shows. Oh, come on, he wrestled Liger. Seth Rollins. With the possible exception of Sheamus, no other name on this list has enjoyed the heights on the main roster quite like Seth freaking Rollins. The eventual Kingslayer captured the gold from Kruger and would go on to hold it for over three months, slightly predating not only his run as the first NXT champion, but also his forthcoming call-up as one-third of the Shield. Since then, Rollins has held two WWE championships, won the 2019 Men's Royal Rumble match, and has become one of the most popular stars in the entire promotion. A universal title match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 35 awaits, as Rollins remains at the top of WWE cards. Rick Victor. The Mayans may have been wrong about the world ending in 2012, but there were a good share of happenings that looked like apocalyptic signs with the benefit of hindsight. Like, for instance, the skinny half of the Ascension winning a promotion's top title from a popular WrestleMania headliner. The doom-loving Canadian veteran would, as his last name hints, become victor of the Ascension, one half of the most dominant tag team in the history of NXT. Fat lot of good that means these days, as Victor and Connor aimlessly wander into flame whenever an underneath duo is needed on Raw, four years after being made to look like bloody fools out of the gate. Richie Steamboat At eight months of age, Steamboat made his WWE debut when Father Ricky the Dragon carried him to the ring at WrestleMania 4. A quarter of a century later, the younger Steamboat was helping run out the clock on FCW when he defeated Victor for the title in July 2012. The promising second-generation wrestler would wrestle his final match just three months later, defeating Cassius Ono at a live event before being sidelined with a serious back injury after a moonsault gone awry. As of the fall of 2016, Steamboat was considering a comeback attempt, though very little, if any word of it, has been made since. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.